There are very few NBA GMs more well known than Oklahoma City Thunder general manager Sam Presti. And well, it makes sense. When you draft three future MVPs in three years, then go on to put together the biggest stockpile of future draft picks the league has ever seen, you're going to have some people paying attention. Now, I think most people understand that a bright future is inevitable for the Thunder, just with the sheer amount of assets they have. But I still don't think most realize just how crazy this situation is. So that's what we're talking about in today's video. If you guys like the content, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Let's go for eight likes on today's video and let's get into this. Today's video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Like a lot of people, I love starting my day off with a bowl of cereal, but a lot of the times, it's not the best start of the day for your health. That's not the case with Magic Spoon. They've got tons of great tasting flavors, most of which will remind you of the cereal flavors we've come to love. They have zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net carbs in each serving, only 140 calories per serving. They're also keto friendly, gluten free, soy free, and low carb. Some would describe me as a cereal enthusiast, so trust me when I tell you guys that Magic Spoon is the real deal. I tried almost all their flavors, and it was really hard to pick my favorite, but ones that really stood out were cocoa and fruity. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today. Use promo code Jimmer at checkout, and they're gonna give you $5 off any order or go to Magic Spoon forward slash Jimmer, and Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reasons, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click that link in the description, use promo code Jimmer for $5 off, or go to Magic Spoon forward slash Jimmer to save $5 today. Presti joined the Seattle Supersonics in 07, where his first main decision was making a selection in the 2007 draft. That selection became none other than Kevin Durant. In 08, Presti had another top selection. That was Russell Westbrook. In 2009, he once again had a top pick, which became James Harden, easily one of the best drafting streaks we have and probably will ever see. He took a team that was in a full-on rebuild, moved from Seattle to Oklahoma City, and in five years, were playing in the NBA Finals. Now, Presti is not perfect. He would soon make one of the most infamous decisions we've ever seen, trading James Harden to the Houston Rockets, not willing to give him the big extension he was looking for. Even without Harden, the Thunder would have a solid amount of success up until 2016 when their franchise star Kevin Durant would jump ship in favor of the Golden State Warriors. But this is where we really saw Sam Presti become the wizard we know. He would trade Serge Ibaka to the Orlando Magic for Victor Oladipo in the 11th pick in 2016. Even at the time, this felt like highway robbery, and that would become even more clear a year later when Paul George would request a trade from the Pacers. There were a lot of rumored landing spots for George, but the Thunder weren't getting talked about too much. But then out of absolute nowhere, they traded Victor Oladipo and DeMontis Sabonis, the player that they had drafted with that 11th pick they received in the Ibaka trade for Paul George. So yes, in one season, Presti turned Ibaka into Paul George. Now the Paul George era in Oklahoma City didn't go too well in terms of their play on the court, but somehow, some way, after getting bounced out in the first round, they convinced Paul George to sign an extension. This allowed them to trade him a year later to the Clippers for one of the craziest packages I think we'll ever see. That being Shea Gilgis Alexander, Danilo Gallinari, plus five first round selections and two future pick swaps. This trade gave Sam Presti the taste of trading for a first round selection, and from that point on, he just couldn't get enough. They traded Russell Westbrook to the Rockets for Chris Paul, two firsts in two swaps, which is just crazy looking back. It was really clear that the Thunder wanted to go into a full on tank rebuild, but with SGA breaking out in year two, Chris Paul having a revival to his career, and Gallinari having one of his best seasons, the Thunder actually made the playoffs. While they missed out on a top pick, that offseason, they had even more people to trade. They sent Chris Paul to the Suns for Kelly Oubre, Ricky Rubio in a first. They continued to make trade after trade, sending any kind of veteran value they had for draft picks. They sent Oubre to the Warriors for a first, Steven Adams to the Pelicans for a first, took on the contract of Horford for a first, then sent him to Boston, took on Kimba's contract, and got another first. There was a lot of little trades in between there, but these were the main ones that created this situation, where the Thunder now have two incredible young players in SGA and their recent six overall pick Josh Giddy, as well as 19 first round selections, including their own, and 19 second round selections through the 2028 draft. Actually insane. Let's first take a look at who's on this roster right now, beginning with that duo we just mentioned. Jay is one of the best young guards in the league. He's having a pretty down year with him shooting just 44% from the field and 19% from three, but this is really brought down by a rough start to the season. He just went on a 15 game streak, averaging 29, seven and six, shooting 52% from the field and 35% from three. It was just last season, he was averaging 24, six and five, 
shooting with 51-42 splits. Not to make excuses, but this is a 20-win team that happens to shoot the lowest team field goal percentage at 42%, as well as the lowest three-point team percentage at 31%. You're not going to find too many players on this roster that are even shooting 40% from the field. So while the efficiency hasn't been the best, I don't think anyone's too worried. He's on the last year of his rookie contract, but this past offseason signed an extension that's going to keep him around through the 2027 season. Then you've got their rookie, Josh Giddy. We've been talking about him a lot lately. The 6'8 point guard has quickly proven to be one of the league's elite passers. He's currently dealing with injury, but when we last saw him out there, he was in the middle of a 20-game stretch, averaging 15-8-7, shooting 45% from the field. The biggest hurdle for him is going to be becoming a stronger shot creator beyond the perimeter, but beyond that, I have extremely high expectations. The passing is no question. He's quickly become super strong attacking the rim, and just due to pure size, there's not a lot of worries on the defensive end. Right now, this looks to be the backcourt of this team's future. It's an odd duo, but an interesting one. We need to remember that SGA came into the league out of Kentucky as a point guard. He was a starting point guard for a Clippers playoff team as a rookie. It wasn't until he joined Chris Paul in the Thunder where he moved to the shooting guard position. A lot of his offensive strengths come from what he can do with the ball in his hands, making him a slightly odd pairing alongside Giddy, but one I could see working if they're surrounded by the right group. My main concern would just be lack of three-point volume from the two positions, that usually are responsible for the most. I think Presti is aware of this, but his focus right now is talent acquisition more than roster construction, and rightfully so. Now, these aren't the only interesting young pieces on this roster. They just put together one of the better draft classes, obviously getting giddy, but also drafted Terrence Mann in the first, then landed Jeremiah Robinson Earl and Aaron Wiggins in the second. Like the rest of this roster, Mann's efficiency isn't pretty, but it doesn't take you too long when watching him to realize he's got a chance to be a special scoring talent. In the last 10 games, he's averaging 16 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists. JRE, I have a feeling, is going to be a foundational piece of this roster. At 6'8", he's super sound defensively, bringing a lot of versatility to the table. He's got the chance to be one of the better 3 and D wings, as his 33% from 3 isn't very indicative of his real ability in that department. Wiggins didn't have a role to start the season, but since finally getting some run, he's looked super impressive, averaging right around 10 points and 5 rebounds on respectable efficiency. After his rookie season, I was super excited about their first round pick from last year, Poku, but I've been a little let down this season. He flashes a ton of potential at times with what he can do with a 7 foot frame, but this year we've seen him regress to 6 points and 5 rebounds, shooting with pretty terrible efficiency. But considering just how raw he was coming into the league, I'm still holding on to hope that that potential he's shown in flashes becomes more and more of a regularity. They also still have their first round pick from 2019, Darius Baisley who I was super excited about when they drafted him, but now in his third season, we haven't seen much development at all. He's averaging 10 points and 7 rebounds, shooting 41% from the field and 29% from 3, a year after averaging 13 points, shooting 40% from the field. What's so interesting about this young group is despite being part of one of the worst teams in the league that has the expectation of being one of the worst teams in the league, there's actually a lot of pressure on these guys. With the insane amount of draft picks this team holds, over the next few years, there's going to be a lot of serious young talent coming to this roster that are going to need opportunity. This puts a ton of pressure on these guys to perform in the short term if they want to hold on to their minutes or really even a roster spot. For this reason, I think we're going to see some of these key guys right now, like Baisley and Poku, not sticking around for too much longer. One of my favorite young pieces on this roster is Lou Dort, but I waited till now to mention him as because he was an undrafted free agent, he's actually already on his second contract and he's got just one year left. In my opinion, it's more likely he's traded than a part of this team's long-term future with how much value he can bring as a 3 and D wing owed just $1.9 million next year. Now, I hope no one thinks I'm suggesting that this core just developing is going to get the thunder out of the bottom of the league. This team, this roster, it's terrible. I'm just highlighting the fact that considering the pool of upcoming picks, this is a super strong core to start with. Now, let's get into some specifics about these selections. Due to just how bad the thunder are right now, the most valuable selections they have are going to be their own. With the fourth worst record in the league, if the season ended tomorrow, they'd be guaranteed a top seven selection with roughly a 50% chance of being inside the top four and a 12.5% chance of landing the number one pick. By the end of the year, this might not be exactly where they are, but it's going to be something similar. This year's lottery is going to be super intense for Thunder fans. Obviously, the higher the pick, the better. But considering their roster, if they end up outside of the top three, there's a high chance they could be forced to add to their backcourt with a guy like Jaden Ivey 
just due to the difference between him and the next best guy. But man, could this be a fast rebuild if they're able to be inside the top three in land one of Chet Holmgreen, Paolo Boncaro, or Jalen Smith. But even after their selection in the lottery, the Thunder's night is going to be far from over. They hold the Clippers' first rounder, which currently projects to be the 15th pick, as well as the Suns' first rounder, which it looks like will be the 30th selection. After this year, they're going to have all their personal future selections. In 2023, they're going to have the Clippers and Nuggets first. In 2024, they're going to have the Rockets and Clippers first. In 2025, they're going to have the better selection of the Clippers and Rockets, as well as the 76ers and Miami Heat's first round selections. In 2026, they're going to have the Rockets and Clippers first. Now, there is way more detail surrounding these selections. A lot of them have protections, but this gives you a good idea of what's ahead. Most of these you would expect to be mid to late first rounders, probably with the exception of the Rockets. They hold their first rounders in 2024 and 2026 with only top four protections. It's hard to say where any team will be in two or four years, but right now, the Rockets have a long way up, making these selections current value extremely high. That's a good segue into the bigger picture. The Thunder won't be making the 38 selections they currently own. You can only fit 13 players on a roster. A massive trade is coming for the Thunder. It's just a matter of when. The draft can build a foundation, but it's hard to win a title solely through it. A good example would be the Suns. They lived at the bottom of the league, which allowed them to bring in some great young talent like Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Cam Johnson, and Mikel Bridges. Even with missing on a top four selection in Josh Jackson, they were able to build the core that allowed for a trade, in their case, one for Chris Paul to catapult them into serious contenders. Let's say the Thunder are able to catch up to the Magic Pistons or Rockets in losses. They miss out on number one, but they land at top three in the upcoming draft. Home Green, Boncaro come off the board, and they take Auburn forward Jabari Smith at three, a prospect that all signs point to being a beast at the NBA level. It's not going to make sense for the Thunder to wait around. They're going to start to build a solid rotation and be the first team brought up in every single trade rumor until they eventually make a move. It'd be ignorant to expect Oklahoma to ever be some hot free agency destination. This team is going to be built through the draft and the trade market. This is why the Thunder have put together this pool of assets. While right now, there's no young star looking to publicly jump ship, in today's league, it doesn't take much for a player to one out. We've already seen the rumors of Zion possibly looking to leave New Orleans. It's not out of the question that other young stars, even the Luka Doncic's of the world, become unhappy with how their team has been run and want out. Now, I'm not saying these guys are going to do that, but in the event that it happens, there is no team in the league that is able to bring a better deal to the table than the Oklahoma City Thunder. But what's so exciting is even after a move like that, they could still have 10 future first rounders on their books, which is just crazy to think about. This has been the era of the super team in the tank, made famous by Sam Hinkie and the Process 76ers. That's coming together, maybe not as planned, but coming together thanks to his efforts. But no team has done what the Thunder have done. The outcomes of this are truly endless, but I struggle to see a bad one. There's nothing more powerful than a rookie contract. Right now, the Thunder's books are absolutely spotless. The only long-term deal is SGA. If this process doesn't take too long, if they can hit on an upcoming top pick, we could truly be looking at the league's next dynasty. But that's the end of you guys. You guys tell me your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.